No Eric says that there's a new update for ChronoSync. ChronoSync now goes to 11, uh, and it has support for Sonoma, but also adds support, apparently, for cloud services for your backup. So you can do... Uh, yeah, so people who don't know what ChronoSync is, it's a syncing and uh, backup program. I'll kind of mention how I use it because it relates Please. to what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. But um, apparently now it can sync files and backups to iCloud, Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, Box, and other cloud services. So that is a new feature that I'm going to have to check out. I didn't know that this update had come <laughs> to come out, and I'm actually a ChronoSync user. There you um, go. But uh, yeah, so I've used ChronoSync in my backup strategy to be the tool that is like, I call it my selective archive backup. And so at its root level, what ChronoSync can do is all kinds of things related to backup. But the primary thing is syncing folders or volumes or directories from one location to another. And it could be local on your Mac. It could be to a network drive. It could be however you want to set it up. It is an amazing tool and you can set up schedules and all kinds of rules. It's very, very advanced. So like I've always used it to do the safe delete thing for files on my my desktop. And I'll give you one example because I think it's the, the easiest to kind of grok. So doing my podcast, I have a Maccast folder and all of my prep and audio files and everything go into an individual folder for each episode. So sure, you know, my show notes, all that stuff. I want to make sure that I archive that stuff. So I have ChronoSync set up to automatically on a schedule sync that folder to multiple locations. I have it sync, syncing to a local Drobo. I have it syncing to a network drive. And then those drives in turn are backed up to the, to the cloud. So I have multiple backups. Oh. So ChronoSync is just always running in the background, doing its thing. And so I know when I go back in, I finished a show. It's been a week later or two weeks later. I can safely delete that entire show directory off my local drive because I know ChronoSync has already moved it off to my other storage locations, my archive locations, and it's backed up to the cloud. So I have no anxiety about deleting that stuff. And I have multiple things set up like that through ChronoSync. That's just one example. I have it also for like movie files and my photo library and a bunch of things. And again, you can do whole volumes. You could do yeah. individual folders. You could do individual. You can set this up however you want. And it sounds like now, I can go straight to the cloud, which is great. The only problem is I'm going to have to upgrade to like the 12 terabyte iCloud. Storage yeah, right. If yeah, I exactly. Ever want to do that. exactly. Right, right, right. <laughs> but that's fine. I can. Uh, I mean, you could sync it to your own private cloud, like, um, you know, a, mm -hmm. a, a, dis, a Synology disk station or something like that, too. Um, yep. it, it, I have a, uh, to tie it all together, you 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 managed you mentioned your workflow and and the last step it was and then you know you can safely delete it because it is synced to all these other places you could use hazel to safely delete those things that are say a month old that is that's what yep. i do here in fact i have hazel set to move audio files and video files in the mac geekab folder to my synology disk station after a month and then they're just gone from my drive and it's, it all, it's, it's like, it's life changing. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I, this, it, the, um, the, we had a little conversation in our discord about this and, uh, Nibsuk said, uh, you know, I, cause I asked people, what do you use Chronosync for? Cause I was trying to wrap my, I knew, I know what it is, but I, it, it like, you need to explain what you're using it for so that it resonates yeah, with people. And exactly. I'm glad you did yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And he said, we use it for copying large amounts of data because unlike Finder, it can skip any bad files and carry on and then gives a report at the end of any files it skipped. Whereas iCloud Drive kind of gets hung up on these things and you don't really know what's going on. In a sense, ChronoSync is like iCloud Drive Pro, uh, it, you know, where it, it adds a whole lot to it and lets you kind of do these things. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, another another great feature of this, <laughs> got to mention, is yeah. it has a checkbox that says "Do not sync deleted items from your source." So oh. if you've set up a a source folder that is syncing, right? Yeah. And you delete, and that sync is still running, it will ignore those deleted files, keeping them on your destinations. Which I that's another feature I love because again, it means I can safely delete something. I think I use this for 
backing up um this is how i back up the movies i've downloaded from uh you know that i've purchased on the the iTunes store or whatever we call it now, the movie store, the, the TV movie app, store, whatever, sure. from, yeah, yeah, from yeah. Apple. I bought movies from Apple. I want to make sure that I archive those because they can go away at any time. And I want to always make sure I have a copy, but I don't maybe always want it stored right you know, there. I have it stored or, or downloaded. Yeah. So I can safely delete knowing that sync says, even though I've deleted it here and it's still syncing the same folder, it will not delete it in my archive. It'll keep right. it. Right. Oh, so yes. So very much, you know, iCloud Drive Pro, where you actually do get to like make these granular decisions about what's going to happen with your data. Yep. So I looked, and in addition to the cloud services you mentioned, uh, Chronosync will also sync to Amazon S3 compatible backup destinations. And which we talked about last week, I talked about ARC backup syncing to S3 compatible destinations and how there were many of those, uh, and including iDrive, which is super inexpensive right now. So like go, if, if you need, if, if you were going to pay for larger iCloud storage for this, Adam, you might be better off just paying for iDrive. 